We got our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit with us. Okay, so this study I'm about to go into right now, I'll just go into it while I'm um, cooking this food, and this is going to be called Antichrist from Israel. So as we can see that our Father put on my heart that whoever the Antichrist is, you know, I mean, the ones from Israel, is they're going to have to accept him. And, you know, we know what's going on with Israel right now. Our father told us time and time again, he, he chose, like he's told us a reason why they were picked was because of the wickedness of the nations all around them. Then Israel has turned itself into, obviously, it seems to be the most wicked nation. That's what it seems to be. You know what I'm saying? He's saying they're the most deaf people, the most blind people. This is what he's saying about them. So I believe what our father's put on my heart is to be true. I'm just going to go into this time. real. So, Antichrist in Israel, uh, exclamation mark, question mark. A star will come out of Jacob, because this is saying where he's, where Messiah is going to come from. Now, our father put this on my heart too. I mean, Messiah fulfilled all prophecy. He fulfilled everything the scriptures entail. Now, Satan being a blasphemer, he's going to, I believe, try to make his anti-Messiah do the same thing. Because for the ones that believe in Messiah coming from Israel... You know, because there's a division out there, as it was spoken about, even the Pharisees and the Sadducees, how some of them believe in the resurrection and some of them don't. Some of them, even now, are believing that Messiah is coming back. Some of them are believing that there's no life after this and that the messianic era is going to come and be on this plane that we're on right now. So, yeah. So, a star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. A ruler will come out of Jacob. Uh, that's numbers. Psalm 67 is Galad is mine, and, Ma and Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Jehuda my scepter. Psalm, you are my son today, I have become your father. That's Psalm 20, 27 through 9. The scepter will not depart from Jehuda, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until he comes to whom it belongs. And the obedience of the nation is his. And now, Numbers 24 17, as we just spoke about, the 19. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. A ruler will come out of Jacob. So, sadly, the anti-Messiah, anti-Christ, has to come from Israel, or they will not accept him. There, and it is also prophecy that obviously that is where Messiah is going to come from, in which we know he did. For the true that understand that, Amen. Sadly, though, this is what is going to happen. This is what it seems to be. This is why this is spoken, or this person will be from Israeli descent, I believe. Standing where he should not be. And because we hear that he's going to be standing where he should not be. What place should he really not be in outside of Israel? That's what it's talking about. As Danielle was talking about, you know what I'm saying? Talking about anti-Messiah, anti-Christ. Where else would this abomination appear? Where the people are deaf and, and can't hear, blind and can't see, more deaf and blind than any other people's. Israel is where this abomination will arise from, sadly. The day is coming when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing where he should not be. Reader, pay attention. Now, he's saying, then those in Judea must flee to the hills. So Judea, if he's going to be around Judea, I mean, this is Israel. A person out in the, and, then, and then they're saying this, when this anti-Messiah comes, then those in Judea must flee to the hills. Get out of there. A person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house to pack. He's saying, don't even go back to your house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for a pregnant woman and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in the winter. Amen. For there will be greater anguish in those days than at any time since our Father in heaven created the world. And it will never be so great again. In fact, unless our Father in heaven shortens that time of calamity, not a single person will survive. But for the sake of his chosen ones, he has shortened those days. Then if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even our Father and Heaven's chosen ones. Watch out. I have warned you about this ahead of time. At that time, after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things take place, you can know that his return is very near. Right at the door, I tell you the truth. This generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will, will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard. Stay alert. That's real. So Jewish became the most wicked nation. 
as so it seems, when they were chosen because of all the wicked nations around them. That's the reason they were chosen. They were the smallest people. Our father chose them for himself and his own personal reasons. They become the most blind and deaf people as well, been handed the word of truth that they perverted. They've been given the word of truth and in its original form and language. They can't take the truth, so they ran and made their own false interpretations of the scripture. Believing our father is only for themselves. He is definitely all our father in heaven. I mean, we are all family, all connected even deeper than, than that. We honestly all came from Adam and Eve. Even after the flood, Adam and Eve literally came from Noah. Abraham didn't come from himself. Somebody bore him. Somebody was born before him. It didn't just start at Abraham. It started at literally Adam and Eve. We come from Adam and Eve, all of us, literally our family. I mean, for the synagogue of Satan, the fake Jews, I mean, this is just more prophecy that our father is real and his life is real. His own people decided to make themselves the most wicked. He is still allowing 144 thousand of them to come though just a blessing literally i mean he is definitely a forgiving compassionate patient loving father in heaven i mean israel's failure to hear and see hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see who was blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger whom i send who is blind as my dedicated one or blind as the servant of our father in heaven bring out the people who are blind yet have eyes who are deaf yet have ears they even ask messiah are we blind like I mean, y'all condemning yourselves. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. He even told us why he speaks in parables. The Messiah in Judaism is a savior. This is what it says on Wikipedia, I believe. The Messiah in Judaism is a savior and liberator figure in Jewish eschatology who is believed to be the future redeemer of the Jewish people. They're still waiting on him to come. The concept of messianism originated in Judaism and in the Hebrew Bible, a messiah is a king or high priest, traditionally anointed with holy anointing oil. However, messiahs were not exclusively Jewish, you see, as the Hebrew Bible refers to Cyrus the Greek, king of Persia, as a messiah for his decree to rebuild the Jerusalem temple. That's unique. In Jewish eschatology, the Messiah is a future Jewish king from the da Davidic line who was, who was expected to be anointed with holy anointed oil and rule the Jewish people during the Messianic age and world to come. The Messiah is often referred to as King Messiah, Malek Mashiach. Jewish messianism gave birth to Christianity, which started as a second temple period Messianic Jewish sect. So, okay, let's keep it going. He says some sad truths. The scriptures... They're going to use the scriptures as they're doing now to continue to pervert it. They're going to take it away from us, the true ones that are truly reading it, to get closer to our Father, spread more truths, and to, you know, understand what's going on. They're going to take it away from us and continue to pervert it. That's why it's important to study it and gain as much knowledge as it from you can and read that, John, as much as you can day by day, brother. It says at least an hour. You got to take at least an hour out your day and read that. Like, you got to dig into that. That's that's important. Because when they take it away, you don't want to be left like you don't know our Father in heaven. You don't know his words. So, look. So, yeah, many of the Jews believe the messianic era will come here on this earth and under this heavens. They rejected our Messiah who came and said he didn't. They said he didn't fit under the they They're deeming that he didn't fit under their conditions. What they wanted, quote unquote. So to them, he didn't come. Within that, they reject our father as well and his Holy Spirit. This is just sad. It is also because most of them do not believe in life after death. Acts 23, 6. Then Paul, knowing that some of them were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, called out in the Sanhedrin, my brothers. I'm a Pharisee. And then our father already took somebody from their side who didn't believe in Messiah and was putting pressure on us, the body of Messiah. We was already getting pressure. He already took somebody that was pressuring the body and used them for himself. So we already have their whole side from Paul, regardless of what they say. He exposed them. We are, we can see there's two different sides. It's saying it right here. He's exposing that stuff, bro. Look, look what he's saying. This is real. Like, tune in. So then Paul. Knowing that some of them were Sadducees and the others Pharisees, this is a separation, called out in the Sanhedrin, my brothers, I am a Pharisee, descended from Pharisees. I stand on trial because of the hope of the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he was letting the Holy Spirit just flow. He didn't think about saying none of this before he got in there. The Holy Spirit just flowing. And the assembly was divided. 
Mm, caught him. The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection and that there are neither angels nor spirits. But the Pharisees believe all these things. Now, now I am on trial because I hope for the promise that our Father in heaven made to our ancestors. This is the promise that the 12 tribes of our people hope to receive as they serve our Father in heaven day and night. We supposed to, right? My king, they have accused me because I hope for this same promise. Why do any of you people think it is impossible for our Father in heaven to raise people from the dead? I too thought I ought to do many things against Yahushua from Nazareth. And that is what, and, and that is what I did in Jerusalem. The leading priest gave me the power to put many of our Father and his people in jail. And when they were being killed, I agreed it was a good thing. In every synagogue, I often punished them and tried to make them speak against Yahushua. Man, I was so angry against them, I even went, I even went to other cities to find them and punish them. One time, the leading priest gave me permission and the power to go to Damascus. On the way there, at noon, I saw a light from heaven. It was brighter than the sun and flashed all around me. And those who were traveling with me, we all fell to the ground. Then I heard a voice speaking to me in a Hebrew language saying, Soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? You are only hurting yourself by fighting me. I said, who are you, man? Who are you master? The master said, I am Yahushua, the one you are persecuting. Stand up. I have chosen you to be my servant. In my witness, you will tell people the things that you have seen and the things that I will show you. This is why I've come to you today. I will keep you safe from your own people and also from the others. I am sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn away from darkness to the light, away from the power of Satan into our father. Then their sins can be forgiven and they can have a place with those people who have been made holy by believing in me. King Agrippa, after I had this division from heaven, I obeyed it. I began telling people that they should change their hearts and lives and turn to our Father in heaven and do things that show they really had changed. I told this first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and in every part of Judea, and also to the other people. This is why the Yehudim took me and were trying to kill me in the temple. But our Father in heaven has helped me. And so I stand here today telling all people, small and great, what I have seen. But I am saying only what Moshe and the prophets said would happen, that the Messiah would die, and as the first to rise from the dead, he would bring light to all people. While Paul was saying these things to defend himself, Festus said loudly, Paul, you are out of your mind. Too much study has driven you crazy. Paul said, most excellent Festus, I am not crazy. My words are true and sensible. King Agrippa knows about these things and I can speak freely to him. I know he has heard about all of these things because they did not happen off in, in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe what the prophets wrote? I know you believe. Facts. He said they didn't happen off in a corner. Everybody seen this stuff, dog. King Agrippa said to Paul, do you think you can persuade me to become a Christian in such a short time? Paul said, whether it is a short or a long time, I pray to our father. I pray to our father, not only, not only you, but every person listening to me today will be saved and be like me, except for these chains I have. So, yeah, that was just a great testimony. Now, but you see, though, he says, I told this first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and in every part of Judea. So, wherever this, that's, uh, I mean, what's being talked about, the anti Messiah, wherever it's going to be, it's going to be near Judea, because that's where Damascus and Jerusalem is near. You feel me? So, yeah, it's going to be over there. So, uh, let's keep going. Yeah, and I tell you, oh, change. And I tell you this. Then he says this. Look at this. Now, this is a reason, too, again, why them over in, um, why, why they just don't feel like Messiah w w was, was Messiah, because he was showing the whole world that it's not just about them over there. They think the whole world revolves around them. That is a true thing. Most of them, I'm not going to lump them all in the same basket, but that's what most of them are feeling like and thinking. And they don't believe Messiah came because Messiah was talking things like this. And I tell you this. That many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into outer darkness, where they will be weeping and gnashing the teeth. He selected them out. As he selected them out before and chose them, he selected them out down to the world. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into outer darkness, where they will be weeping and gnashing the teeth. Now, brothers and sisters, Mill, you know... We got to keep it going. But yeah, man, I'll find them a silence paper with us. Love and peace, everybody. Hope you all have a blessed day. Peace.